Hello. We are here today to talk about branding. And for this fantastic video on branding, I've got the fantastic Heather Lorendo, who is the fantastic marketing director of ETSU Online. Is that accurate? Uh, it, fantastic didn't fit on my business cards, oh. but I hear it is a part of the official title. <laughs> it should be. If it's not, <laughs> it's implied. And Heather and I are going to talk a little bit about brands, how important they are, mm -hmm. and um, also how ETSU Online has been branding itself and the importance of um, making a clear brand and promoting that to the right audiences in the right ways or in good ways, productive ways. So, Heather. Um, she, by the way, is a graduate of ETSU's communication program, so that might be of interest to you. And I'm also uh, currently enrolled in the Master of Science in Digital Marketing, which is a new degree program here at ETSU. So that should be inspirational as well to you all. And she is an inspiration to me. Also doesn't fit on my business card, <laughs> but I put it on my resume. <laughs> inspirational. <laughs> So in this inspirational video. <laughs> and motivational. That this too. Is, we're multitasking here. <laughs> okay. Um, can you share with me wh how you perceive a brand, what you think it is and its importance? I, I think that when we talk about people, uh, we refer to people in certain ways. Um, you know who I'm talking about. She's the tall, funny one. Um, or she's the, the tall, super smart one, or she's the, the short one that's dating so-and-so and does this for a job. Uh, we tend to describe people in context. And for a brand to be successful, it has to build its own context because it's not a person. It doesn't have any inherent attributes. It, it's not really even a physical being so much as it's an idea. Mm -hmm. And so to take a product or a service and to build a company and to say, this is who we are and this is what we do, um, requires that you look at different things, including your positioning statement. What problem do you solve from the consumer perspective? Not, this is who I am and I have a lemonade stand. This is who I am and I'm here to quench your thirst. Um, and then there's the added, the, the very important part of brand for me is the brand, um, not only the positioning, but the personality and the tone. Because some brands are going to be a little bit more investor bank um, healthcare has to be really careful they can't uh, get too funny because people die of misprints as Mark Twain said um, <laughs> but they need to be warm fuzzy but clinical as well and then you have Red Bull and Red Bull drops people from the edge of outer space and lets them free fall toward earth and and get the whole thing on video and Red Bull actually has an internal media department and it's huge and they've taken this this energy drink and they've taken their brand and they've built an entire media department around it so everything that goes out for Red Bull fits into that brand persona and their personality and their and the tone of being slightly avant-garde very risk-taking extreme sports and this is this is what we feel like we make energy drinks that's what we do but we feel like risk taking and adventure mm -hmm. and Fun. snowboarding and all the things that you know, most of us don't really get to do jumping out of airplanes and, and in real life and please in real don't life. do this in real life but but you know a lot of people did tune in to watch Aaron Bumgarner's descent from from space and you know we all hoped the parachute was going to open but what if it doesn't <laughs> oh my god and and that's an energy drink. That's a that is a brand. That feeling is a brand feeling. And they could have gone any direction with with that. But they've been very careful with how they've positioned themselves and the way that they talk to people and the and the personality that they've created for something that doesn't even really exist. When we talk just about the the brand as something that we create as part of uh, communicating with an audience of people. So, how? Is it important or why is it important to establish your message through a brand? Uh, it creates consistency 
I think, um, especially when you have uh, a lot of internal stakeholders, um, not only your external stakeholders and your potential audience, but the, the people on the inside um, are also a part of your brand. And to be able to cl clearly articulate that this is who we are. This is the service product we provide. This is our target audience. But what we're really selling mm -hmm. or what we really are is hope. What we really are is adventure. What we really are, are being better than your neighbor. I mean, what, whatever it is that, that goes into that, you're able to give an emotion to the concept. Right. And as people are able to identify with that, it becomes easier internally for everyone to push a consistent message outward. And on the outside, as you're seeing, you know, the share a Coke with a friend. And you're seeing the polar bears wrestling around at Christmas time. Uh, Coke is happiness. It's very bubbly, right. and that that's a very very important thing. And when we see their logo and when we hear their name, we feel an emotion. Yeah. And the brand is is the connection between this graphic image that means nothing on its own, and the emotion they've put behind us, to where we mm -hmm. feel happy when we're talking about or having or seeing commercials for Coke through the visuals, through the music, mm -hmm. through the text, yes. whatever it is. Um, ETSU Online mm -hmm. has been kind of promoting a new brand or a revamped brand since you came on board. When was that? Uh, I've been in this position for 18 months. Uh, it was a new position before I got here. The, the person mm -hmm. who was in the position before me was in it for about a year and took a different position on campus. And when the position was created about two and a half years ago, there was no ETSU online. There was no brand. It, it came from nowhere. Um, part of that was the insight of the fact that a lot of people weren't aware that ETSU offered classes online. Mm -hmm. And beyond the classes that were offered long, online, there were degree programs. Uh, on the undergraduate level, there are a few completion degree programs for allied health and some of the radiography and the dental hygiene. Um, and on the graduate level, there's quite a few online programs and no one knew, um, which is not helpful no, when you're trying to build enrollment. And starting with in, in online. no name recognition, no brand recognition. So my predecessor uh, took part in some research and what came from that research is that ETSU Online was primed to have a brand. And a logo was created, and this was before the, of course, the new logo that rolled out last year. And it was the ETSU Mountain logo, and it was very simply the same logo with online underneath. So we were able to, from the very beginning, take our brand and aligned it with a brand that had been established. Mm -hmm. So it looks very the similar. The brand. Yes. And it looked it looked very similar even then. Of course, you know, all of the logos look very similar now. And a part of a large part of that has to do with branding. So everyone can share the, the investment in the ETSU brand, mm -hmm. even as they differentiate themselves on the service or the classes or departments. Um, so we were already kind of in that line of we are ETSU but this part of it. Mm -hmm. And um, what kind of came out of that for me when I took the position is we are distance education, we are e-learning, we are um, technology focused. We are ETSU's cool kid brother. Right. And we the tech get, nerds. <laughs> we get to be a little bit more, because of that, we get to be a little bit more playful mm -hmm. in our personality and our tone. We don't have to be quite so institutional button up uh, because somebody's doing that, and and that's very important for a, a hallowed university with 104 years almost now behind us. Um, but ETSU Online gets to post the favorite apps of the week, and we get to talk about science and technology and um, be helpful in a different way. Our, our audience is slightly different. We're not uh, necessarily advertising or trying to draw in a target audience of high school students or traditional students. So I'm dealing with adults who are time poor, mm -hmm. who have mortgages and are working a job and they need a flexible solution that allows them to finish their degree or change their careers or get a graduate degree that doesn't um, 
take over their whole life? And how do you balance that? And what's involved with that? And what other concerns? What are keeping these people up at night? So everything from in the new year, the, the you know the financial advice of the the 50, 30, 20 budgeting rule. I had no idea what that was, but it might be something that's useful for my non-traditional student who's trying to balance the needs of a family and going back to school. Um, time management, cool things in tech. We get to spread out in a, in a very unique way that separates us from ETSU while we still get to be a part of that, of that brand and we do get to draw from its history to provide credibility for us. Now, how did you decide what your target audience was or your main target audience? How, how was research involved in predicating what you're doing toward promoting this brand that you've been talking about? Um, it started with our internal stakeholders. And part of what our, our research internally told us is there was a concern across campus that online classes would cannibalize our student body. Yeah. That students who would be in a campus would just take online classes and that and doesn't never really... never come to campus anymore. Right. Um, um, that may or may not be a good idea for any of you. Um, <laughs> But that was not the goal. We weren't trying to market to our own student, students. And in the same way, we, we weren't trying to necessarily draw in the 18 to 24 year old fresh out of high school because the admissions office does that. Right. So we started talking about things like duplication of effort. What are What is the appropriate target audience? And obviously we have some graduate programs that are fully online and graduate students fits that 25 plus model for mm -hmm. the most part. Um, but we don't necessarily have to limit our marketing focus to a drive radius around the campus. So we're targeting the same audience in terms of demographics, but not in terms of geographics. We they take could be a, anywhere and so we, in the world, right? We expand that out depending on you know what the program calls for or what licensing may be required. Some of the healthcare, we don't go too, too far out. Mm -hmm. um, some they have of, to be licensed by state. Yes, and some of, some of the other programs were in in hotbed areas of Atlanta and New York and DC because we have a forensic document examination certificate that you can take entirely online. So we have to kind of reach out to where that might be necessary, but we have the ability to do that. So for the undergraduate level, it was decided that we wouldn't go after the high school students or the, the traditional age students. So it was the 25 plus, and we started doing market research at that point. Um, and when this, when my position was created and some of the strategy was starting to kind of bubble up, we were uh, right on the hills of the 2009 recession. Mm -hmm. And during a, what our research told us is that during times of recession, this is a national trend, um, people are more likely to go back to college to finish a degree or to change careers or to make themselves more marketable uh, by updating their skill set. And jobs were harder to find at that time. And um, employers could be a lot more choosy about what the education requirements had to, had to be. So you tend to get an influx of non-traditional students during that time. Uh, so the strategy became, let's, let's work with those students. Let's focus our messaging on what matters to those students, mm -hmm. which is convenience, flexibility, quality. They want to know that this isn't an online diploma mill because that right. was that was very prevalent very early in the in the online education distance education scene in the in the 90s. Uh, you could get a diploma for anything from anywhere. Um, sometimes you got them by accident a spam in your email inbox. <laughs> I think I'm a doctor somewhere, I'm not sure. Um, so the, the idea that we are an accredited school, that it, the same faculty that teaches on campus, um, I've actually had Lee's. I, I think she was about the only instructor I had in my last year of, of college. So uh, Poor she's, gal. <laughs> it's all right. She, but then, I didn't scar her too badly. I did okay. Um, but the same faculty and, and um, adjuncts and the whole support staff, the same that it is on campus is the same that it is for online. That's important to people. They don't want to feel like they're being shuffled off. Right. So our so message... So quality was very important. And, and, and targeting our messaging to address those concerns. Um, putting out content that says, yes, you can do this. This is what an online class looks like, and this is how you succeed in one, and we know you're nervous, but it's just not that bad, I promise. And here's how you can contact people that need you, because we recognize that some people that haven't been in school for a while, and this might be their first 
experience with online education have no idea what to expect. Right. So it really and they're is pretty scared and sometimes about the technology or about the time usurpation. Right. And and from the from the time that you kind of figure out what your brand is and your brand personality and your brand tone and you look from that perspective at your target audience and you say what problem am I solving for you and what else goes into that problem and what other problems are you facing? You're taking a very personal and emotional approach. Right. And emotional appeals. Are you're the way making to get there. a very personal and emotional connection by speaking to those needs. I know that this is uncomfortable for you and you haven't been in school for a while, but you'll mm-hmm. do fine and this is why. And people respond to that because somebody gets it. The knowing right. knowing you're not alone, you are you are not alone, is very 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 important, um, and and we all we all need to feel that way. And I think right. that's where that's where brands, especially in the digital age, are either succeeding or failing. You're it's it's in group out group, and it's mm-hmm. not enough to be the brand and have a following. You have to be part of the group that embraces your brand. There is nobody following anybody else. It's we're chasing each other in circles, but we're all part of the same group. Um, and and brands can attract people or repel people. Yes. I and mean, we talk a lot about brands yes. being appealing and the brands that are successful, such as Coca-Cola or Nike or, um, you know, many of Red Bull mm-hmm. and the water brands. But... Um, some brands have the opposite effect, you know, if they have not done a, a positive job of branding. Well, and there's, you know, part of your brand is this is this is who we are and this is what we do, but it's also a promise. Your brand is a promise. And uh, Comcast, for example, has uh, two Twitter accounts. One is at Comcast and one is at Comcast Cares. I urge you just to do a search and see what pops up because they have a Comcast Care handle, but they don't actually provide customer service through Twitter. Yeah. And they're making a brand promise they're not delivering on, and when they break the brand promise of providing cable by having an outage quite frequently, people get upset, and then there's right. nobody they can talk to. Um, so, so Comcast has a brand issue, and they have a trust issue, and they have a customer service issue, and a lot of that and I think is going to have to be addressed through to some extent, changing the brand right, and creating new promises and, and rebuilding trust. It's, it's very much um, Hertz Rent-A-Car. Do you remember? Um, it was it has been like number one forever. And mm-hmm. then Avis was the second rated. And Avis' slogan for a very long time was, we try harder. Right. And they, they purposely, you know, kind of positioned themselves as we know we're the underdog, but we're, we're trying here, and people people responded to that. So positioning your brand to align yourself with where you're at in the market, mm-hmm. to where people know that you're honestly addressing those problems. If you're listening to Comcast, that would be great. <laughs> um, just saying. Time to catch on. Yeah. Um, and you do have, most of the time that brands fail, they're over-promising and under-delivering. So determining what your promise is is essential to your brand. Mm -hmm. So it's not that you can't be all things to all people and nobody expects you to, but everyone expects you to be the thing you say you're going to be. And did you all face that as you were uh, promoting this? sort of new perception of the ETSU online brand? Not not exactly, but what we did was we provided a new outlet for a very specific type of dialogue. And some people have expressed frustration with their online classes. And, you know, part of our messaging is support. Mm-hmm. If, if you go through our website or through Twitter or Facebook, if you send a message or an email, I'm the person that gets that. I get them all. And they get handled, maybe not by me. We do have, you know, there are there are people that are better than I am at answering the questions. I'm really great at getting people to ask the questions. I can't, I can't do everything. And then getting it to the right, <laughs> right. person to deal with um, the question. So, you know, there's there's a lot of, I'll, I'll pick up the phone and, you know, I'm, I'm having this problem with this. Is this a technical issue? We have people for that. Is this an issue with the structure of the format? Is this a, do you need accessibility? Do we need to do something to make sure that you can participate in this class if you're a student with disability? Um, so I faced having to keep the brand promise of support. Um, and we've done a pretty good job with that. And there's, you know, there's been mistakes that we've made. Um, 
I'd be lying if I said there there weren't, but my brand promises not to do that. And it's right. about saying, you know, I've not run into this issue before. And you've brought me a very good question, and I'm working to answer it, and this is what I'm doing. It's about being accountable more so than it's about being right. Yeah. And, and being faced. And being responsive. Yes, yes. Um, so we haven't really had the issue of the pushback on, you know, are, are you fulfilling the, the brand promise in that way because, you because, have been. because we have been but that was one of the things I, I knew when we say support is one of our is is going to be one of our brand promises that mm-hmm. those people come to me and I'm promising not just for me I can be responsive all day long I'm promising to harass the right people until they're responsive too <laughs> I'm making that promise on behalf of the entire university so that does feel like a risk sometimes yes. um, because there's there's so little that but you've got to have buy-in from all the people who work with you. You, you, and you do have to have buy-in, and you have to have an angry phone voice sometimes. But it works. And and sometimes it's as easy as I know the right person to contact. I'll get everybody in an email chain, including the student. And now we're working with the student as a colleague and a partner. Mm-hmm. And this is transparent and it's accountable. And at least they can see that. So the, the, you do get an A for effort. The general public, your, your target audience is very forgiving. They just want to yeah. see you try as hard as they do. And as long as you're doing that in an authentic way, um, you're not likely to run into a, a whole, whole lot of trouble as long as you stay away from insensitive tweets um, and hate <laughs> yeah. speech of any sort. I, I'm getting tired of seeing that every time, every time. Danger, danger, Will Robinson. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, social media. You think and they would learn. And in what media do you actually do your brand promotions? Um, in quite a few. We still do uh, some broadcast. It's very small, and it's usually a run-up to enrollment, open enrollments in, in November and in April. And that is a, a lot just for brand awareness. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and it's, it's not necessarily a converting tool. It's a little bit more difficult to track. But, uh, hey, we're here. And when you say converting tool, you mean you're just trying to get people to know what your brand is. It's very top of funnel. It's awareness level. And hopefully, because the call to action is the website, uh, the people who are interested will that come will to the we- website and go you know, from the top of funnel to the middle fun- of the funnel. And also in that same range, we do uh, quite a bit on digital. We do pay-per-click and banner ads, um, which I wish they'd just call billboards because they are. They're the billboards of the information highway. Right. Um, but also good for awareness. Those they We do have some click-through. We've had a few conversions on the site, but generally those are just for awareness, just mm-hmm. so people will see your logo. Impressions matter more than, than the click-through in a lot of ways. Um, we are trying Pandora for the first time. So oh, wow. every, every about every semester, twice a year, we pick something we haven't done before, mm-hmm. and we do it, and, and we test it to see what works and what doesn't, didn't, and what wows and what next. Um, right. So you, if it doesn't work, you don't do that again. And yep. If it does, you we, adjust. We, we, we tweak it a constant, um, especially with our banner ads and with our pay-per-click ads, there's a constant process of optimization. Um, we always have at least two ads running. And every couple of weeks, you do have to give a little bit of time to make sure you have a good data set. But mm-hmm. one of those ads goes away and is replaced. And I'm always trying to beat the top performing. It's like a game because otherwise it's just numbers and data. That's not fun. <laughs> so <laughs> Got to keep her amused. Yeah. So um, I play the, the, the beat the Google ad uh, every chance I get. But because of that, the ads keep getting better and the click-through rates keep getting better and we start converting uh, more people that come to the site. Uh, So that's our our paid media um, Mm -hmm. is is typically print media, any print media? We we have done some, we have done some print media on campus and and that's that's because the East Tennessee and on campus people will pick up as they're walking to and from class or while they're waiting to get into an auditorium that hasn't been unlocked and we've actually seen quite a bit of success with that. Uh, But other than, other than uh, limited TV and radio and the mm-hmm. on-campus print, we haven't done anything traditional in uh, more than a year. Okay. And it, it's just because with program marketing, our niche is very targeted. Right. So, and they're not necessarily print media readers. They're not necessarily. Unless we're talking about ETSU on-campus media. And building awareness is different. And there's, there's no reason I would run a billboard for a program. 
I would run a billboard for ETSU online. Hey, we have this, you know, undergrad, grad, everything, you know, come on. Mm -hmm. But for a, a, a Master of Science in Nursing, they're out of the entire population that's going to drive by, the nurses are going to be so few of them. Right. Um, so our paid media space is, is moving increasingly digital. Um, our owned media space is almost entirely digital. We have our website. Um, I do have a <clears throat> excuse me a blog that I'm trying to integrate into the the website so they don't live in two places. Mm -hmm. um, and our social media. And we have Facebook, and Twitter, and LinkedIn. And LinkedIn, I'm developing, and I'm doing that um, along with the university because there's there's really no need in that space for me to have my own um, identity. So right. I will be writing with the ETSU brand because it's a great way to target people by job title for graduate degree programs uh, as well as alumni, um, mm -hmm. give them frequent flyer miles for coming back. Um, and with Twitter, it's interesting because we don't – I don't do a lot of marketing recruitment for Twitter. I use Twitter to communicate with students on campus. Right, to Events, have a conversation. <laughs> current current students, here are your deadlines, here's what's coming up. Um, there is an ETSU account. Well, it's not. It's, a, it's not at all endorsed by ETSU, but it's at ETSU Squirrel. Tell them ETSU Online <laughs> sent you. Um, <clears throat> I've had quite a bit of fun with them, um, finding pictures of squirrels. Um, <laughs> Uh, again, again, we have to keep her amused. But some of those tweets are the most popular we've had mm -hmm. because, one, they're, whoever is running that account has a great sense of humor, and they play along. Yeah. Uh, but it's, it is an account dedicated entirely to these random crazy squirrels we have all over campus. So it's something that isn't all me, 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 sell, 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 right. but it displays our kind of playful personality, the fact that we're paying attention to stuff beyond ourselves. Um, and a lot of what you post, I... Because I follow it, and you need to be following ETSU online as well, um, is is fun or engagement more than it is selling something. And there are a lot of studies about that. Quite honestly, um, the one of the latest ones that I've seen is a sixty thirty ten. 60% of curated content, content you've gotten somewhere else and you've shared, giving credit to the person that you've shared it from. Right. Um, 30% being content that you create, but only 1% being content that's promotional. So for every 10 yeah. posts, only one is a uh, buy now. Mm -hmm. um, or tickets but available. Wait, or but wait, there's more. Um, so kind of following that mix has at least kept us alive, especially on Facebook where it's getting harder to get organic reach. We see a lot better organic reach the more often we post something that people actually engage with. Mm -hmm. So a lot of that is the curated content because right. it speaks to a specific need. It shows that we're interested in the community. Issues that are going on yes. in the world. Um, and then, you know, the... the created content, the content that I own, comes in the forms of quotes. Um, we've leveraged memes in the past. Uh, one of them for last semester for winter session, we took um, Ned Stark kneeling on his sword from uh, Game of Thrones, and the, the caption was, winter session is coming. And that was one of our most popular Facebook posts ever because it, it was fun, people got it, yeah. and it was, it was promotional, but it was also unique. It was something that had my logo on it, and people shared it because they connected with it, not because it was me, but because it was them. Yeah. Um, it, it's very... So it's not all about it's ETSU never, online. It's, it's, it's never about you, ever. I mean, it's, it's just, it's never about me. Um, and if you think you're part of the target audience, just remember you're never the target audience. <laughs> even, if, even if you are, a lot of what um, sometimes, because I am in the target audience, in theory, for like the digital master's program. And I have to remove myself from that. And what I do mm -hmm. is I market to my best friend, who is very right. similar to me and has a similar job. But I, I can't be the target audience. I'm too close. Mm -hmm. So making sure that you know that this is not your personal account. And right. making sure you know where those lines are of what does ETSU... ETSU won't be posting anything political because we don't post anything political. We don't go there. We don't... Uh, I, I very much... Um, respect the um, 
integrity that comes from, you know, like what's happened in Paris and publish whatever you want to publish, do that on your personal page. Right. Um, that's not something that ETSU Online gets involved in, religion. Um, you know, we celebrate holidays and we take everyone into account. And there's been Merry Christmas post and there's also the first day of Hanukkah post. And there's, there's a lot going on. We try to be respectful. Right. And we try not to be inflammatory, even if we are a bit tongue in cheek sometimes because it's funny. Um, and that's a fine line. And if, if you're not sure where that line is, it's too don't late. Don't go too It's close. too late. <laughs> so we'll, we'll do the play on winter session is coming, but we don't make jokes about Good Friday, right. even in good fun, because you never know where that line is for somebody else because it's not about you. Mm-hmm. So you do have to be very, very respectful. Um, and it's, it's been really interesting to me to watch what things people connect with and what things that they don't. And most often where we get the most traction is when we're not talking about us, we're talking about our audience. Mm-hmm. And things that they're interested in. And things that help them or, or matter, matter to them. To them. Mm-hmm. Well, that's a good spot to kind of uh, wrap up this particular discussion of branding. Obviously, we're going to be talking about it amongst ourselves. Talk amongst yourselves. Um, uh Extensively, because branding is what we're doing in advertising for the most part and determining what your brand should be and who your target audiences are. Um, But I like to maybe close with just a question about any particular tips as these advertising students and advertising copywriting students are um, helping build brands this semester and in their futures. What would be maybe your top three to five tips for them as they are doing that? Hmm. I didn't warn her about this, so. (laughs) Um, In no particular order, because I I don't know that I can rank them while I come up with them off the top of my head. That's fine. Don't ever take your target audience for granted. It's really, really easy when you're talking about a group of people that are between the ages of this and this and that have an affinity for this and this um, to lump them together into something that's not human. Um, That happened shortly before World War II and Mm -hmm. six million people were killed. It's not a different process. You can't dehumanize. Um, So remember that your target audience is made up of people who have hopes and they have dreams and they have worries and they love people and people love them. And they're unique individuals, each one. And although they are part of your target audience, Mm -hmm. they are individuals and empower them individually, even through a mass means um, is, is where you'll find success. So don't forget that your target audience isn't a they or a them. It's a he and a she. And uh, I use personas to help me as I'm crafting my messages. I do have like one face that represents, you know, this is this is what my, and I talk to that person. Um, Better than talking to herself. (laughs) Right. Um, Well, actually, sometimes I talk to myself and people come in the office. I'm like, I'm I'm talking to my persona. I don't know what you're you're talking about. Um, So that's that's very, very useful. But please don't lose sight of the fact that you're dealing with real people who have feelings and and their lives are as as important to them as yours is to you. Um, And there's a certain amount of integrity and respect that goes along with that. Um, Don't be afraid. I see a lot of brands that want to be uh, too, too careful, and Red Bull wouldn't be doing what Red Bull's doing if they were careful. Um, It takes a lot of brass, I think, to stand up in a boardroom and say, you know what I think would be great for our brand? Let's drop somebody from outer space. Yeah. Um, think big. And they all go, uh. think, and, and, and what, what's our insurance company say about that? <laughs> uh, but, but think big. Um, try something. Lawyer. Try something new and be innovative and pay attention to the feedback that you get and always do better than the day before. Um, That goes a long way. And keep your brand promises. Mm -hmm. If you say that Twitter is going to be where your customers can reach you for support, Twitter has to be manned at all times. Somebody needs to wake up in the middle of the night when their phone dings. You can't not follow through. So when you're creating a brand and when you're saying, this is what we stand for, this is what we do, these are the emotions we want to invoke, this is the relationship that we want to have with people, and that's how you talk about a brand. Mm -hmm. Am I, as a brand, am I your friend? Am I your mentor? Am I a respected financial advisor, fatherly type figure? Am I the cool younger brother? 
because all of those relationships have an emotion connected with them. And, and a personality, which we come back to with brand all the time. Every time. And it always comes down to what role do I play? And then the personality flows from that. Mm -hmm. um, so make sure that you know what what you want to be to people. And all of that is relational and all of that is emotional and your brand for all of the brainstorming that you do and for however great it looks in a plan is about something that you can't write down. It's about the feeling you create. Everything you do is about create, not what you create, but the feeling you create with what you create. There's, there's always something you're not gonna be able to touch there, you just help people to. And don't lose sight of that. And make it emotional, mm -hmm. have it evoke something. And shock value is good occasionally, but not hardly ever. <laughs> you, that's not, that's not a good, uh, that's not a good tactic. Or fear. Um, we'd, and yeah. Um, be careful about the images that you use, especially in social media. Um, there are copyright laws and just because that's you a good find reminder. it, and just because you find it on the internet doesn't mean it's fair game. So, you know, be careful. Um, and whatever you decide to do, do it. You can't go halfway. No. You, ha you really do have to embrace it. You have to believe in it because if you don't, no one else will. Sometimes getting the bosses to believe in it too is a challenge, but if it's good, they will come. <laughs> getting getting people to take risks is hard. Um, if you want to yeah. do something that's really fun and out of the box. You better have some data. <laughs> data, data, data. Yeah. Um, and, you know, th th it always helps have somebody on your team to play devil's advocate. Well, what if this happens? Well, what if this happens? Uh, you might not like them by the time you're done, but you'll be able to face whatever <laughs> questions come, come out. And you can um, kiss and make up later. Uh, and you'll have a great product in the end because there's somebody challenging your thinking and you you have to pay attention. Well, and, and that's what it comes down to. And I asked you in one of my early videos, are you a creative thinker or are you a creative person? And I think that, you know, that's what branding and advertising and marketing um, is based on, is just thinking creatively and mm -hmm. trying to think a little differently so that people are attracted and interested. But I've been very interested in your thoughts. I Thank really you. appreciate it, Heather. And um, we'll talk a little bit more about branding in other venues, but we thank Heather Lorendo and ETSU Thank you. Online. You be sure and follow them on social media.